Hello and welcome or welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be giving you another decluttering marathon. We lived in this little apartment for about six months recently while we waited for our home to be built and I took this opportunity to just continue ruthlessly <laughs> decluttering my space so that we didn't move a ton of excess into the new house. So I wanted to go back over some of this footage, give you guys tons of motivation and some of my favorite decluttering questions to ask when you kind of hit a hard place with decluttering and help you kind of move through those tough decisions. Thank you so much for being here today. Please subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and let's go ahead and get started. This is my daughter's room, a complete disaster at the moment, but I, I don't like stuff like this that causes a big mess. Things with a lot of pieces are, I call them mess makers. They're just notorious for making a huge mess. So we played with this a few times. This was something that grandma brought. We had so much fun with it, she loved it. Um, but at this point, it's just kind of everywhere. And because it's a puzzle, these pieces come apart, so it's like the ultimate, ultimate mess. So somebody else could enjoy playing with this. I've got, I think, all the pieces, so I'm going to go ahead and pack this up and donate it. One of my favorite kind of toys to get rid of are exactly toys like this. Mess makers, things that have a lot of little pieces. That's not to say that we don't have toys like this in our house. We love the little Calico Critters dollhouse with all those sweet little pieces, but I try to keep stuff like that to a minimum, and I like to rotate toys like that. Okay, I found this little <laughs> area in my boy's closet. Like I said, my house is a little bit of a mess, but look, there's another little floater that I didn't even realize we had. So let's pass that on. And then I'm seeing a couple of books that we can actually get rid of. Um, this one right here, my kids don't read. And then this one from my childhood that I actually realized is super boring. <laughs> I loved it as a kid, but I'm looking at it now and I'm like, why did I love this so much? Let me know if you have books like that where you absolutely loved it as a kid and then found it later and weren't that impressed. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and let this go. And I am gonna clean up this little area because I just like can't handle it um, and see if there's anything else I find in here that I know what my kids don't use. For the most part, I let them go through their own stuff, but this is just madness. We do love having a healthy library of books in our home, but I try and just keep it to my kids' absolute favorites. Now, I wanted to share with you again one of my favorite decluttering methods. It's where you take a space in your house where you have plenty of room to kind of sprawl out and then divide your wall into four categories keep, relocate, trash, and donate. I am a super visual person, so I love writing this out old-fashioned style on pieces of paper and taping them up to the wall, and then I just go through my house and collect either bins or bags that I'm not using at the moment, and I use them. The area of my house that I'm working on right now is my master closet. I knew I had an excess of stuff in there and I wanted to get rid of a bunch. Some of the questions that I like to ask myself when decluttering just to make the process a bit easier is, do I have something else like this? Or do I have something else that serves a similar function? When is the last time I used this? And if I saw this at the store today, would I purchase it? So there are definitely questions that I feel like really, really help you declutter because sometimes you just end up overwhelmed and not quite sure what your next step is, what to do. But when you divide things into categories and you have a really select specific um, series of questions that you can ask yourself, it really does help move the process along and help you not feel so overwhelmed. And then another question that really helped me was, is there another person out there who could really use and appreciate this item? Here is what I was able to do just by putting the keep things back and just quickly organizing them. I have this little sewing box. Here is my makeup that's seasonal. I actually wanna get a different container that one's just too small, so I'm gonna get a new one for that. And then in this one, I have my purses. 
and then I have birthday party supplies like party bags and tissue paper. And then in here I have all my craft stuff. Now we are gonna move on to decluttering clothing and I'm gonna be completely honest, this is a little bit of a tougher area for me. I actually really enjoy children's clothing, especially clothes for my daughter. It's very, very hard for me to get rid of clothes, but I'm gonna let you know what method I like to use to try and keep things a little bit more under control. I have realized that having a tub for clothes that you either think you might be able to use later um, because kids are gonna grow into it or things like a short sleeve shirt that you might end up wanting to use on a warmer day in the fall um, is really, really helpful. So I keep one tub for the entire family. That's all I feel like I need. So what I did is I put all of our fall clothes in here and you'll see, I've already started pulling some out, but I just have fall clothes, fall clothes for myself and the kids um, put in this bucket. And then like right now, since it's time to switch seasons, I can just pull the summer things that are still good um, and put them into the bucket. And I'm not gonna keep any more than what fits in here. I only wanna have one bucket in my life to worry about. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through these first decide what is completely outgrown, can't be passed on, and then make a donation pile, and then we can start kind of swapping things out. In most cases, I recommend getting rid of duplicates as the very first step in easy decluttering, but when it comes to clothing, I have to reverse that. One of my very favorite things to do is identify some basic pieces that my kids are comfortable in that go really well with other items that are easy to mix and match and buy multiples. A good example of this would be black leggings. I have I think three pair of them for my daughter and she wears them all the time. She wears them with dresses, sweaters, shirts, anything really. So if you have certain items that you find work really, really well for yourself, um, in this case for your kids, buy multiple, buy your favorite t-shirt in multiple colors. I absolutely love this concept for clothing. In addition to having a seasonal bucket where you can actually go through and switch out clothing, I also like the concept of having your own home store. For this concept, just figure out how many clothing pieces you want your children to have in their rooms at any given time or in their dresser at any given time. A really good rule of thumb is one you know, shirt for each day of the week, maybe three pairs of pants, two pajamas, something like that. Decide what you're comfortable with and then the excess gets stored in a bucket. That way, if something gets ripped, stained, or outgrown during you know the next few months you just go into that bucket and get something rather than running to the store you might have to do laundry a little bit more often with this method but it really does help cut down on the amount of laundry that you are dealing with at any given time i do laundry once a day let's move on now into the bathroom vanity area here is an area that for me i have to really keep my eye on and make an appointment to regularly declutter or else it just gets completely out of control i love these white baskets from target they are perfect for pretty much any organization job. This is a good example of a little 10 minute job. Other 10 minute jobs I love are the junk drawer, maybe cleaning out the refrigerator under the kitchen sink. And that's always something that gets really piled up as well, especially if you love cleaning products like I do. So have a running list of a few 10 minute projects you can do if you ever get the chance. But now let's move on to my shoe closet or the coat closet. This is an ongoing, ugh, this is an ongoing process for me, an ongoing decluttering process. It's not a very tidy area of the home. Pretty much no matter what I do, <laughs> the shoes are always an issue, but this is what I have before. This system has worked obviously not well. <laughs> I was going to say it worked okay. No, it didn't. I do love these organizers. You can get them pretty much anywhere. But what I've realized is that having two buckets is the best option for us. I have since come up with a different system 
than I had it this time with just the one tub. This one's great for keeping maybe on the back patio. You can kick your flip flops off into it or something like that. But I recommend having, if you can fit it, two different bins. I have to divide mine into Cody's, my husband's, and the rest of the family. Here's an example of maybe when you have somebody in the house that doesn't want to be as minimal as you, and he is pretty minimal in some areas of his life, but he loves shoes and he has a lot of them. So maybe it would work for you to do kid shoes versus adult shoes, or in my case, husband shoes versus everyone else. But just having a system that is gonna work for you is really important. And then I love the over the door shoe hanger just for a little bit dressier shoes, maybe our church shoes that I don't wanna have get messed up um, or smashed. So this is just another one of those projects that you kind of constantly have to keep your eye on and revisit because the shoes are just kind of a messy ordeal in general. And then a hack I have for shoe deodorizing is to put a little bit of baking soda in the shoe and that really has helped in the past. They also make different sprays. You can put in a couple of wool dryer balls with a few drops of essential oil. You can also put some dryer sheets on the very, very bottom of the basket that you are containing the shoes in. Those are a couple hacks for shoes, but I do like to go through and declutter shoes that are worn out and shoes that don't fit us anymore. Now let's move in to the pantry. Again, this is my old apartment and this was a really small pantry, but ironically enough, it's about the same size as the pantry that I have now. This is actually a linen closet that I had converted. To get started, if your floor is really, really messy and you can't get in, which was my the story of my last pantry, and I actually will link that video for you too because it was an eight hour ordeal, huge pantry transformation. But in this video, I'm gonna be giving you different tips. I'm gonna take this one shelf at a time. You could also set the timer and just do 10 minutes at a time. You would be amazed at what you can get done in 10 minutes. But I'm gonna take it shelf by shelf. I'm gonna start at the top grouping like things together and discarding any trash or anything that looks expired. A really good decluttering tip or rule of thumb is to start with your supplies. It's really tough if you start decluttering and you do not have a trash bag, you do not have a cloth and some surface spray or even some water just to dampen it with. In this project, I actually used this box and I will tell you why in just a minute, but it was really, really helpful to work inside the box. Any crumbs went into the box and it just gave me a really nice contained space to work in. And I knew this helps with my decluttering anxiety, which I have. So it really helped me to know that the only space that I'm working with is whatever fits inside the box. Having boundaries when you're decluttering is incredibly helpful. And I mentioned in one of my last videos that I'm going to be doing an entire series on different decluttering methods. I hope you join me for that. Uh, let me know what you would call this method where you have a box. And I've even heard of people who don't have a box just setting out a towel and letting that be their boundary. Whatever they're working with at that exact moment cannot go beyond the towel. It's again that idea of boundaries that is so incredibly helpful, especially if you're somebody who gets overwhelmed and you know that you are not going to be working with anything that goes outside that. What do you think a good name for this decluttering method is where you have some kind of definite boundary that you're working with like a box or a towel? I have three empty bins now, which is not what I expected. That's crazy and I've mentioned in previous decluttering videos don't go out and buy bins first because you actually might have more than you need in your house already. So that's another tip. I'm actually going to just make this a little bit easier on the eye. I'm going to go ahead and put whatever will fit from this shelf in this bin. And I'll just label this miscellaneous when I go out and get my labels. Just so it'll look a little bit nicer. I might even stick that macaroni and rice in there that's just right here on this shelf. Again, just so it looks a little bit cleaner. So because I had this box and then my trash bag with me, 
This is the only mess I have to clean up and it's very contained. Now, if my toddler were to wake up from her nap, I could just scoot that into the laundry room and shut the door. So that is another reason it's good to have some kind of box or bin because you can actually just set it aside and save it for later if you get interrupted. But this is always really hard to see is how much food we've wasted. And so I recommend going through your pantry every single month. I don't have it shown here, but I also really recommend labels. This is very helpful when you are doing your grocery lists. You can just look inside the bin that says pasta, see what you have. It is incredibly helpful. You always know what you need. You always know what you have that you can make other meals with, and it's easy for kids to help you put stuff away. I would love it if you hit subscribe for more decluttering, motivation, and tips. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you soon. Bye.